And the music off. Honestly, you've been doing this for how long now? Uh, and 12 weeks now. Hey! Oh, yeah. 12 weeks. Bowie or Bowie? Bowie. Well, doesn't he say it Bowie? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Press the button okay, instead of doing it remotely. I think my, my, my Wi-Fi is it's yeah. gone, gone all funny. My Fi. Because uh, mine's my Fi, not your Fi. Mine's going yours slow. Working? Well, no, it's go, just going on the go slow. Oh, the troubles mm. of Wi-Fi and Marla. No, the modern history. Mm. We've had a little role reversal, haven't we, James? I'm super smart today to try and impress you, and you've come in your um, sort of Japanese salvage denims. Oh, I want some of these jeans. Yeah, they're this. really cool. Are they comfy? Not when you first put them on. It's like wearing cardboard trousers. I saw a um, I saw a really great YouTube video for, from a company who make mm -hmm. unwashed natural denim yeah. jeans like that. And he basically said, "Don't buy our jeans; they're rubbish." Um, also, don't listen to your music on vinyl because it yeah. scratches exactly. and it's like. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he had like three or four other kind of versions. As I to like why, that. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. like reverse advertising, yeah. but it's like really, really good. Like Only it. drive electric cars. Yeah, exactly. That, yes. Right. Should we kick this off? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we, shall shall we? Try to stick under the hour today. We've we promise. We will. We have under fifty-three we minutes. Almost. Popcorn. Pundits. Podcast. Week 12. We did it different. We did. Yeah, there we go. Just to keep them on their toes. Exactly right. Keep an eye on you lot out there. Hi, guys. In television land. So, this is your... podcast. It will on YouTube. I know. This is your Popcorn Pundits podcast, our weekly review of released movies on the silver screen and also on the small screen at home. Yeah, well, I've got a bigger screen than it was before. I think you're going to say mine's bigger than yours Well, <laughs> I've got screen envy all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, we like to uh, highlight movies, give small facts and in ensure that people know what movies they should be watching and what movies they shouldn't be watching through our personal points of view. Yeah, but it's just kind of like an unsnobby um, description and kind of review of what we've seen. And, yes. and sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't. And if what? they agree or disagree with us. Get in contact with us. Yeah. We, we are getting more comments, aren't we? I, we're encouraging you to get in contact with us, encouraging you to let us know what films you've seen, encouraging you to uh, comment on our reviews. Um, I'm going to start asking us to start posting all of the um, reviews that we're, that we're doing as in like, Numbered marks out of ten. Okay. I think we should, yeah. from 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 week one. I think we should start doing that. Yeah. Um, so uh, tonight's Thursdays. Yes. Podcast on the sixteenth of January. Yes, twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. We're going to be reviewing. Well, Do you mean Thursday the eighteenth? No. 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 It's yeah. the sixteenth tomorrow. Is it today? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got quit out, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because you're doing this on... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh so... Oh, my God! <laughs> so we we'll let that one out. That's fine. It's Nobody needs to know. Yeah, exactly. wow, never so, argue if you producer. are a regular listener or viewer of the Popcorn Pundits, you know that we're going to be doing the top ten yes. of the cinema releases. We're going to be reviewing... Peter and I are going to be reviewing a movie that either we've seen together or individually. And then we're going to be talking about homework. Yes, we are. Shall we? We shall. Over to you, PT. Okay, so this is the UK Top 10 as of the 15th of January 2023, which is a Monday. Come, number 10 is The Boys in the Boat, which is the George Clooney. 2023. What did I say? Oh, yes, nice. 2024. Oh, it's but the film's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. The website we got our resources from have not updated the year. I'm mm. having a really bad start to this podcast. <laughs> I'm I think it's probably our best start. Factually <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> Is um, this the one that was filmed locally in Marlow? What, this podcast? No, the boys, <laughs> the boys on the boat. Yes, it is. Yeah, George was hanging around like a bad smell. And they had a, they had a preview. Yeah, they, they had a launch thing mm. at the uh, Everyman Cinema on Sunday. We didn't get invited. We tried. <laughs> Next time. Failed miserably. Next time, every I man. I found all of my contacts and got an eh, eh from every single one Did of them. You? So, George, next time, man, seriously. We could have given you a good man. review. Can't give you any review because we haven't, neither of us have been to see it. No, we haven't. We also haven't been to see number nine, Wish. Which is mm. the Disney film, which is... Or number eight. Because uh, it's horseshit, not going to see it. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. I haven't heard a good word said about this. 
But I mean, it has it has raised a bit of cash, hasn't it? But anyway, there we go. Mm. <laughs> so number seven is the boy and the heron. Yes, which, which I you went, saw. I went to see it yesterday afternoon, and it's it's a it's a really beautiful thing. I have yes. to say, I am. Um, is it as beautiful as the other Gimli movies? So I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert of the Gimli oh, really? studio. I'm I'm not. My daughter is a huge mm. fan, and um, so she wanted to go. And uh, what did she think? She thought it was really good. I mean, we all came out not mm. really understanding what the fuck had happened, to be totally honest with you, because you think... That's a gimme movie, though, isn't you, it? You think the boy in the heron is kind of like... Uh, yeah. is quite a good description of what's going to happen in the film. Yeah. Uh, the heron isn't a heron. No. no. Yeah, a, a floating castle is not a castle. No, it's yeah, not. But yeah, but, yeah, but anyway, no, I really enjoyed it. It was a really, really good film. Absolutely beautifully made, and the animation was incredible. What I love is the fact that the... The animation, like yeah. the backdrop animation, mm -hmm. is super, super detailed. Mm -hmm. Like very, very yeah. fine art backgrounds. And then the main characters in it are just like so, cartoon characters, like aren't so they? super yeah. simple and, uh, over the top. But weirdly, it just, it just it works. works. It's fantastic. It? And I love the fact that it feels like it's been translated from Japanese into English or Chinese into English or whatever. But it's not at all. What do you mean? As in like, it's not... A, when I first started watching these movies... Yeah. I was under the impression that it was either a, 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 Thai, a Thai or China, China, some Oriental movie. It's Japanese. That had been translated into yeah. English. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's written in English to start off with. And voiced in English. Yes. Anyway, what was your score? So we'll about how, this later. Do you, how can you see that either dubbed or with subtitles then? Don't know. Unless I they guess turn they it into. Do a version mm. I'm very confused. I know, exactly. More to come next week. What, what yeah. was your score? Oh, um, the call, that's straight in there. I'm going to give it a uh, 7.1. Ooh, it's quite high for him. Yeah, it's made me want to go and see more of his films. Sorry, mm. number six is Priscilla, Pris Priscilla which, mm. Prish 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 um, which I, I really want to see. I think, I think it's going to be quite interesting, but you really don't, so I'm going to see that on my own. So you can go and see number five, The Beekeeper, on your own. Weirdly, that has some good reviews. No, it hasn't. It has. It has by your mate that we went to the cinema yesterday. Oh, but no. Yeah, but... Yes, anyway. it's, a, it's a B movie. Number four is One Life. It didn't. <laughs> it's a B movie. <laughs> we, we ignored it because the joke was so good. Today. I didn't. I didn't get it. I don't know what's wrong with me today, but it's brilliant. How can you ignore that? Don't say I'm brilliant. so sorry. Don't that's put ideas in it. Oh no, I want, I want some more of those three <laughs> today, four. please. Thank you very much. One Life, brilliant movie, but it's dropping like a stain. So please go and see it. Everyone. Yes, please do. Uh, number three is Anyone But You, which I haven't been to see. I no. don't really fancy it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is Poor Things, which we both went to see uh, well, after I'd seen oh. The Boy and the Heron, actually. Oh, yes. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a movie to talk about. Yes, this will be reviewed in a moment, yeah. so hold your horses. Yeah, and number one is... Wonka! I was going to try and let you try and cut you off before you interrupted me again, but anyway. Which has now raised 56 million quid. Well done. Yeah, didn't they do a good Timothy. job? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. That'll, that'll okay, and that, is, uh, that is this week's top 10, whether it's the 15th of January 2023 or 24. There you go. So, poor things. So, this is now the, your weekly review of the latest release. And we're talking about the number two in the charts. Yeah. Number two in the top two charts. And you don't get giddy about going to see films very much. Because you, Not at you all. do watch everything all the time. I try but to keep a powder dry. But you have been a little bit giggly girly about going to see Emma Stone in this for the last kind of three or four weeks. And knowing it's coming. And yes. we've seen trailers. And the trailers are, I mean, they are yes. hysterically funny, aren't they? They're very, very good. Weirdly, it's not Emma Stone. Weirdly, it's not uh, Mark Ruffalo. And it really, it's not even William Defoe. It's the director. Is it? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, our, our Greek friend, who I'm going to butcher pronouncing his name, Logos Lathanomonomos? Let's just leave it like that. Yeah, let's just leave it's it like that. It's something like that, yes. or, or it's not. Yes. <laughs> um, he's responsible for The Favourite, which is jaw-blindingly beautiful. Um, the Lobster, which is fantastic, and The Killing of the Sacred Deer, which is dark, 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 and Dog Tooth, which I haven't seen yet. But those those three films go go and screen go. And sh you need to download them and watch them on, t on 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 the small screen at home. They are a beauty to have. Fair enough. I have you seen, seen any of them? I haven't seen any of them. Favorite, you will love. Okay, you will I love the favorite. I'm uh, I'm away this week, so I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that one. I'll be week. keeping an eye on you. Perfect. Thank you very much. From outside your cabin in the woods. <laughs> That's a different film. Yes. So this movie. Yes. It's um, it's a really kind of 
basic storyline, isn't it? So it's kind of like a Frankenstein-esque type story. Very, very much so. So the, 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 the kind of concept is that um, the first opening scene is Emma Stone uh, as a depressed, grown woman mm-hmm. flinging herself from a London bridge right. into, the, into the Thames. Yep. And then um, it cuts to Willem Dafoe's house. Yes. Where basically he has removed Emma Stone's brain and replaced it with a baby's brain. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's what you kind of get from the trailer, isn't it? That's kind of the point Mm -hmm. we went to the trailer, where you kind of see her as a grown woman. That's right. um, But with the mentality of a baby. That's right. Um, And then it's kind of the development of a human grown woman with a baby's brain, which is kind of accelerated to, I think, to add kind of drama to Mm. the film. But that Otherwise, it'd be a really long movie. It would be, yeah. it would be. But that doesn't kind of really explain what this film's about, does yep. it? So why, why don't you go into the darker side of what we're, what we're looking at? So it's produced by Emma Stone as well. It is. So she's had some... She's a, and, and rightly so, because she put so much of herself into it, I felt. And she really laid herself out completely bare... In more than one way in this movie. In, in, every, in every possible way. Physically, mentally and No, I've, I've always really liked Emma Stone. Right. And, and I love her as an actress. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I can't think of anything I don't like her in. Right. But as soon as this film started, mm-hmm. I really struggled with her as, yep. as the infant Emma Stone. Yes. I, I found it really, really uncomfortable. And I didn't actually... I, I, to start with, I didn't really like her acting mm. in it. It kind of felt really hammy and forced absolutely but then you realise that she's actually just doing a phenomenal baby and exactly. it's, it's it's incredible because you I, you know I said about that autobiography the other day yes. where the, the, the more you get to know them mm-hmm. the more you love them yep. it was that kind of experience I think that's exactly what the director was trying to do so what you have here is you have a, you have a, a development of a character within a character physically um, over over a two and a half an hour period, and you're literally watching the, the, the you're, li- you're literally watching the brain of a child inside an adult, fascinated with the world purely as a whole world as a giant experiment as but, a but, gigantic. But, but with that fearlessness yes, of an infant, absolutely, which is absolutely hysterical yeah. because she doesn't act like an infant. No. And this is this is the second moment where I felt really quite uncomfortable. Well, yes, when you I have think that's a bit of controversy. Yeah, in that, so, isn't so there? basically, they're... men aren't portrayed fantastically well in this film. Are Not in they? any shape, <laughs> apart, apart from one guy. Yeah. One guy sort of stands out he as the shining out. beacon of yes. just and true yeah. and a nice guy. Yeah, absolutely mm. right. Played by Rami Yosef. And yeah. it's, uh, it's a, again, a really beautifully acted mm. part, actually. It's great. That's a very difficult act for him because everybody else around him is co- completely insane. I mean, Mark Ruffalo he's, is... He's, he's, he, fucking... he's, found a new, he's found a new hot pot. <laughs> He's found a new place in my heart really, in, 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 this, in this movie because I've never seen him act so hammy and so dick dastardly it's in hyster- my entire life. He's absolutely hysterical. And, yeah. and you can even see that he thinks he's hysterical when he's acting it. Very I mean, much you can, so. You can imagine the offcuts of this film yes. like on the, on the cutting room yeah. floor because they've just pissed themselves yeah. laughing like, so, yeah, through it so yeah. much. It's... Um, yeah, I mean, it is absolutely brilliant. Mark Ruffalo, basically... So, as she develops, mm-hmm. as Emma Stone develops as a, um, as a character and becomes a woman... A baby inside Emma. Absolutely right. And, uh, and basically, as she, yeah, as she kind of develops into an adolescent and to her, like, her, her mature years... That's right. What's the phrase she uses for shagging? Oh, fear, fear, furious... Fear, furious bouncing. Or, furious, <laughs> furious jumping. Furious yeah. jumping. Or doing the job. <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the job on him later. There is a lot of furious Quite jumping like in this lo- film. It's... Yeah, there's lots of furious jumping and lots of doing the job. Absolutely. More so than I would ever have thought there would have been. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if there, if this definitely wouldn't have had the BFI brief sex scenes with it. Like, I mean, um, it's an 18. I, I didn't expect it to be an 18. No, I mean, that, at all. Yeah, there is a lot of nudity in it. Yes, and a lot of sex scenes in it. Emma How- Stone looks better in black and white. Weirdly, Weirdly. Yeah. I think they all did it in a way. Yeah. I think we all do. Yeah, but generally. I mean, so I so with this director, is he mm. known for like his set design and that type of thing? Because very the, much so. It was, I mean, absolutely stunning. It well, was I'm going to give you some references with particularly the 
the traveling journey and the, the, the cityscapes and so on and so forth. Have you ever seen a film called Delicatessen? I have. Well, there's direct references to, to those two French brother directors. And obviously Lost City uh, is, is the same one, the same director as well. And Aliens 3 as well, weirdly. And it's always that sort of steampunkish, but really stylized. So it's, it's kind of creepy, but realistic at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it is super steampunk, but there's also like a lot of Gaudi-esque architecture. Very much I so. mean, the ceilings mm. in um, Willem Dafoe's house yeah. are like this rippled um, fabric-type ceiling. It's absolutely yeah. stunning, but, but like you, every you... room you're in, mm. it's just like absolutely fascinating. You're just kind of like looking around everywhere absolutely. and everything. It's absolutely incredible. I, I, think, I think, in a way, I think her costume design reflected the whole design of the whole film yeah totally. it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful yeah. but even, even even the guys are dressed absolutely impeccably mm. mark i mean mark ruffalo's sure, shirt his suits were incredible and i want his shirt that dress shirt with I that know. waffle fun, like, know, that was amazing wasn't absolutely it absolutely yeah. incredible yeah, exactly and i was checking out the buttons on that as well i was really quite amazed by that yeah. so so all in all i think they, they they all did an incredible job the the, the storyline obviously follows her um maturing but also, I felt that there was an element of. I think one of the main story, one of the main stories that I felt I came from that was there was so much laughter at the start of the film because she was so adolescent and she was so young and everything was shiny and new and everything was funny, and the more she learnt, the knowledge took away a lot of that joy. And at the end, there was no joy at all. In fact, and, and she, you know, at the end when she's speaking coherently and she's there's there's no laughter. At all, and I thought that was quite an, an important message Art from the director. Direct... in life. Yes, I well, think yeah, so. Yeah, she kind of relearned what the world was about, mm. and um, and she'd come got back to that adult life as opposed to the the joys of infancy yes. when you don't have any stresses or anything. Yeah. Also, the 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 role the the reversal of men's treatment of her yes. when she starts developing a brain mm. is. I mean, like, it's a very, very interesting... Yes. It's a very interesting development. And yet again, another film that has is using a stage presence as a very direct way of portraying the story. But it's cut into acts, several different acts as, as the film yeah, went on. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, to me, this is more... This, is, this felt more book-like than play-like. Okay. It, it, it did kind of feel like we were on a journey. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and, and the different kind of... The different scenes that we were kind of watching her in, mm -hmm. and I mean, when they got to Paris, I mean, that is—it's just hysterical. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. absolutely incredible. And the ex-husband came along, and they, 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 yeah. This... So, so that was so at the beginning of the film, mm -hmm. they they start straight away with Emma Stone's story, That's and right. I must admit, my first thought was. Where she come from? Exactly, and and there's no reference to that the whole way Not through. Not at all, and, and very like, cleverly. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, towards the end, mm. the, the her history is kind of brought back to kind of round mm. off the you know round there's off the little piece. bow on top of this present, isn't it for us? Yeah, this? absolutely, and um, yeah, and I because I, I, I must admit that most of the way through the film, I was concerned as to how they hadn't addressed yes her past life. Yes, because before... we're, we're trying not to ruin yes. the big kind of spoiler in the film so it's um but yeah but, but it's, it um... is based on a book yes so because um alistair gray mm -hmm. who wrote the book um he was approached by yargos lathimos <laughs> that's not See how that. you say it I'm so much sorry. better than my pronunciation <laughs> left um, a couple of letters out yeah um about adapting poor things in 2009 i added three more in it's fine uh, gray <laughs> took him on a personal tour of glasgow and showed him all the locations that he'd included in the novel oh just really to give inspiration oh wow and um Lathamos said he was a lovely man unfortunately he died a couple of years before we actually made the film but he was very special and energetic he was an 80 something when we met uh, and as soon as i got there he'd seen dog too uh, and said, I had my friend put the DVD on because I didn't know how to operate these things, but I think you're a very talented young man. Aww. So he said Beautiful. yes to him adapting it into a film. So if you like, if you like Delicatessen, if you like, uh, I mean, what other film references would you give it? Um, the Reanimator. So basically, all of the kind of early Willem oh, Dafoe stuff was yeah. done in black and white, and the the reanimation scene was a very much direct, so. a direct take from yeah. Reanimator. I thought Willem Dafoe was outstanding. In yes, this. like he's but quite under 
You know what I mean? He kept it low, I felt. He did keep it low, but yeah. he played it at, well, absolutely spot on right. Mm. He's got this really drawling Glaswegian accent yes. in it. <laughs> and it's... Um, and and the more he kind of explains about how he became this Frankenstein kind of character with his relationship with his dad, the more you can... He, he comes across as... really sorry for him. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> sorry for him. It's just like... Yeah. He came across like a really nice chap. Well, he didn't at all, actually. I liked him. Did you? I liked him a lot. Because th- there's the ethicalness of what he was well, actually doing, which is quite... He was a scientist above, above all, wasn't he? He was trying to remove emotion from his life. Yes. Um, however... I mean, the the creations are brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of, some of the special effects in this film... The goat duck. ...are so beautifully is... <laughs> weird and subtle and done so well. You look at it... You, it takes a double take sometimes, and, you, and, you, and you're you looking at the screen and you're going, well, we that's went, a duck and a... Yeah. We went with a friend of yours, mm. and when the pig chicken appeared yes. on the screen, yes. he shouted out, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> It's like that's, that's a, that's I think good, that summed everybody's yeah, idea, wasn't it? Good, good, good point, well and made. And you're right. You're right to point out the mixture between the black and white and the colour uh, film used, which 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 was subtle, which was really subtle to begin with, and then so subtle halfway through that you didn't even notice the change. At well, one were point. you waiting for like a Wizard of Oz moment? Because yes. I, I was. <laughs> I was waiting for the kabam yeah. where we're going to go to colour. And yet, though, it, it kind of did, but it just wasn't more subtle. Yeah, and and it was used as a reference point for past. And then it was used in present, and there was nothing was explained, and I really like that. Yeah. Um, it was revealed in September 2023 in an issue of Empire that Lathamos gave the screenwriter Tony McNamara three films for tone, like for references for tone and feel of the film. Mm-hmm. What films do you think it was? If J- James will nail this, won't he? Well, he should do. So we're asking for films that were. So when. Um, Lathamos gave the screenwriter some references saying I want it to be this tone and this yes. feel of the film. Well, yep. I'm going to say the Delicatessen 100% Reanimator yeah. uh-huh. and um, the third one I don't know go on give us a third Frankenstein what you got? So it was And the Ship Sails On the 1983 film Belle de Jure the 1967 film and Young Frankenstein, the 1974 Obviously, film. Obviously, Gene Wilder, of course, yeah, yeah. Young Frankenstein, yes, so makes well complete sense. There we go. Um, there, there, is, there is obviously a bit of controversy in reference to um, the sex scenes and what was going on and so on and so forth. We won't give too much uh, away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I personally feel that th- there's no need... For the director to be hung, drawn, and quartered in, in in this film at all, because if this ever were to happen in real life, there's a, there's some bigger issues to deal with. <laughs> Personally, but also the the, the contentious moment, mm. which is basically a man trying to have sex with uh, a, a woman who a beautiful woman who has an infant's brain. Yes, it it leaves you hanging so uncomfortably when you're watching it. That I think it addresses it pretty well, and also I'm not being funny. We live in a pretty dark society where it's not a it's not an awful thing to address problems that we have in society, we do and it certainly addressed them head on. Um, is it time for your scores? Before I we, don't want you to give too much. I know. Away. I know. I, can I? Can I? Give, can I just give you three quotes from the film Please that do. will inspire people to watch this film? Are you going to do it in Emma Stone baby talk? No, 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 but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but three of them are from Bella, okay? So Bella, Bella one, one of my, these are some of my favourite quotes from the, from, the, from the film, okay? I must go and punch that baby. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that's a scene where they're out for dinner and it's like a that's dinner it. dance, isn't oh, it? That's, that's right. Trailer, oh, it? it is absolutely brilliant. And, and in an out of context, it doesn't sound that funny, but when you, when you see the film, it is absolutely fantastic. And we've all been there. Um, I have adventured it and found nothing but sugar and violence. And I think that sums up, that sums up, to me, that sums up the whole world, which is absolutely beautiful. Sugar and violence when I can yes. get my sugar. Exactly. And to continue with her uh, sugar and violence, um, why keep it in my mouth when it's revolting? Yeah. I love that comment as well. It's a life motto. And then I've got one for Peter to read out because this is more Peter's uh, world. Where, um... That one there. 
Okay, it's, it's, it's Mark Russell. That's Mark Rothko. <laughs> Are you expecting me to read all of that? Yes. We're, we're all masters of our own ships, you cunty, cunt-faced dipshit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's pretty much Mark's whole speech all the way through the whole... Amazing. He is... Uh, that, his character is, is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I I get, I'm really interested what you're going to score this. Yes. Did you think there was anything... OK, we're going to ask what we're going to prove it. Mm -hmm. Did you think, do you think it was too long? No. no in fact, uh, our colleagues with us felt that it was half an hour too long. I think you could have added another half an hour to it. Quite, I was in, I was I, in deep. I was in too. Now, the boy and the heron, mm -hmm. I struggled with the last like half an hour of, of that, and okay. I, thought, I thought it was a little over long. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of, I was kind of concerned that we we're going to be going to like a, a, a two hour plus kind yeah. of epic after that. It wasn't too long at all. No, no I it was really and in good. fact, I think, I think because it had such strong scenes that were different from each other the journey was so different from each path of the journey was so different from each other and so intriguing and also it wasn't just the aesthetics it wasn't just it was the, the whole story just changed completely to a certain extent because her fascination with, with experimenting and learning about the world took us in completely different directions I felt yeah I thought I'd, it kept yeah. me engaged it okay. kept me very, very much engaged give us a score James I'm giving it a 9.1. Wow. Okay. Honestly, wow. I adored it. I adored it. I adored it. It is fresh. It is groundbreaking. It is watchable over and over and over again because there's so many small things in it that you would miss. I'm definitely going to the cinema to watch it again. And if anybody wants to come see me with me, let me know on Instagram and I'll be happy to come with you. Awesome. Peter, your score? So my score is based <laughs> on the fact that I... As soon as the film started, I thought I was going to hate it because I couldn't stand the way that Emma Stone was in it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I then realised that actually I'm stupid and that's what I was supposed to do yeah. and then fell in love with her during the film, yes. I'm scoring a nine. Yes! It's, it's, it's absolutely yes. incredible. So divided by two, that is a nine point and a half. Five. Yeah, we call it a nine point one. Yeah. Call it 9.1, yeah. Nice. It's actually, the IMDb score is 8.4. Oh, okay. So we're, we're actually, as a combined score, that's pretty close Not for us to bad. IMDb. Yeah, that's pretty and decent. And it has had 301 nominations and 58 wins so far. It's got, so do, do you it's got what, to mop the award. Well, do you remember when we first um, saw Killers of the Flower Moon? Mm -hmm. And yes. I said, I didn't feel like it was going to win an Oscar. Yes. And I feel absolutely vindicated in that now because that was nothing compared to this the, yeah. the acting was nothing as good the yeah. cinematography was nowhere as good the sets were nowhere near as good mm -hmm. this is better in yeah. every way shape yeah. or form <laughs> yeah I'd would, I would, I would put this I'd I would stand this quite happily next to Saltburn yeah and, and above I yeah. mean the, the score in this was, was <gasps> yes it's tricky though no but I'll tell you why I felt that the, the music or the, the, the score to begin with was actually more important than the script and the text to begin with. I'll tell you the reason why, because she hardly said anything. Mm. And it was the it was the it was the uh, introduction of each scene with the music and that clinky clanky and that slightly weird and it was kind of twisted. Well and it's not like songs, is it? Not at all. It's it's used as a um as a scene setter. Yes. So I mean so like you know I said to you that I have uh, Spider Man through the Spider Verse yes. as a as a as a playlist. Yeah. On my um, mm. on my Spotify when I go to the gym, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have this. No, I mean it's not something very you could, unnerving. Yeah, you could. That, I, I don't even know you could listen to it to be honest with you, but it does work so well in the film. It's a real. It's another character. It's incredible. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And and that scene in the abattoir when she's looking at the dead bodies <laughs> with a croissant. With a croissant. <laughs> Away, yes. Should we leave it there and move on to your homework? Yes. Yeah. Well, because otherwise you're going to make it a two-hour podcast. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. Right. Go and see it. <laughs> so homework. James, do you want to go first? Yeah. What were you given by Peter? I was given any given Sunday, which I went to see on a Sunday. Which I actually watch. I, I downloaded and rented this movie because it was nowhere I'll to be you, seen. I'll pay you back. Whatever your review is, I'll give you the money back. I'm really sorry. But um, it's not a Sunday movie, is it? It's not meant to be a Sunday movie. It's, it says Sunday in the title. Yeah. Any given Sunday. It's a Friday night film. It's a Friday night film. Al Pacino. Yeah. I mean, it's got a gigantic cast. Yeah. Al Pacino, James Woods, uh, Camin Diaz, 
Um, pronounce, pronounce that name again. Camin Diaz. <laughs> Camin. Cameron Not Diaz. The ice cream. <laughs> yeah. It's like the drag queen Cameron Diaz. LL Cool J. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies I, love. Ladies love Cool love. James. Yeah. That's what it stands for. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, as a Jamie Fox. Yeah. It's. Um, it's 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 a massive 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 film. I mean, it's gigantic. Oh, it feels he gigantic. Off saying this, it means he hates the film. Uh, um, however, Oliver Stone plays one of the commentators drinking whiskey from a bottle and high-fiving his fellow um, pundit of, of, of the sport. Um, Macy Boy, who plays Two-Face in, 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 in Batman, he's, he's, he's one of, he's one of the, 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 not quite pundits, but he's one of the... Tommy Lee James. Yeah. No, no, no. No, the, the more... The oh, more, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, the blonde yeah. one. The blonde. Yeah. Anyway, um, and obviously Al Pacino. Abertino and in his younger, slightly younger years, it's, it's mid two thousands. You know, it's it, he hasn't quite turned into that little sort of poison dwarf character. He was still do, using just for men at this point, wasn't he? Just about, yeah, <laughs> just about. There's a lot of black hair, you know, goatee beard, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, there was there's a massive avalanche of mid to late nineties heavy rock. Um, there's lots of Nine Inch Nails, there's lots of heavy rap, there's lots of Public Enemy, and which is great stuff, but immediately you know you're watching an old film. Mm-hmm. Immediately you know that you're watching this. It's, and and to, to, to emphasise the the brashness of the sports, it's, it's, it's an American football film, by the way. So, 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 which, so Which is always going to knock a decade or two off taste-wise anyway, isn't it? I mean, they're, in America, they're always... Yes. Stuck over his shirt, that sort of thing. So the premise for the film is um, Al Pacino's playing a coach of an American football team, who and he's the uncle of the owner's daughter. That sort of, and it's all very. And it took me fifteen minutes during the film to figure out who was what character because there's no characters <laughs> introduced at all. It literally just goes straight into it in the middle of an American football game that uh, Al Pacino's team is losing quite significantly. And it's all very shouty, and it's all very loud, and it's all very bish bash and bite. And there's lots of men smashing it into each other with balls flying in the air, and so on and so forth. It's not salt. It's not salt burn. It's not salt burn. It's. I stopped at one hour forty three minutes okay. to make you a cup of tea. An hour left. <laughs> okay. And I didn't turn it back on again. <gasps> It's the first time I've ever done that with a film. You didn't finish it? Didn't fil- finish it. You haven't even said what the story is. Yeah, I know. It's American football. It's American football. And it's, he's it's, it's, it's shouty men at each other, shouting about how much money they're earning, shouting about how much blockage they're doing, shouting how far they can throw a ball. And they're all really rubbish, but they're all really good at the same time. They all hate each other, but they all love each other. So it's, my favourite part of the film uh, comes at about one hour forty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> and <get some. laughs> of course it does. Is that when it, the aliens come down? The, and the, I missed the, that the, bit. The, the premise of the film yes. is that there is uh, an old quarterback mm. who plays for the team. Yes, who is Dennis always, Quaid. Dennis Quaid, who's mm. always been their talisman. Yes, and he's been racked with injury. Cap. And is basically at the end of his career. Mm-hmm. And then there's a new, new whippersnapper. Um, quarterback Jamie. who's come in and taken his place on the team <laughs> and uh, and it's the story of how the new whippersnapper one basically has to drop out and Dennis Quaid comes back and, yeah. and it's, a, it's a brilliant story it's just got loud music because it it's American enough. football I don't mind that music however <sighs> you're wearing a bloody cardigan you scoring it James I'm, I'm wearing a what I'm angry, you're wearing a cardigan. I'm That's wearing why a I said it. Button knit. Because you didn't finish your homework. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, I paid for this film. <laughs> yeah, don't, you don't have to score it, don't I worry. I paid for we, this we film. I, I, was, I watched Swim Fan. I was crocheting through it. <laughs> it. It just didn't... It, it just didn't... I love Albert, I love all the actors in it. All the actors in it. I, I love Jamie Foxx. I love them all. I mean, even LL Cool J in that in the Halloween 10 movie that, you, you know... He tried to come back in acting. Um, <laughs> it didn't. It didn't work for me. It didn't. I'm sure in the '90s it was acceptable to watch movies like this, but I, I don't think there's, there's I don't think there's a time and a place for people's lives to watch this movie. And now, 
Yeah, James is wrong. So just, what's just your to say. Three point nine. Oh, you stuck a three on it. 3. I don't 9. think you should score it. What, what would your score be? Oh, I'd, I'd be a, I'd be a six point eight, six point, six point mm. nine, somewhere around there. It's a decent film. I, th- I feel I feel that it was... I, I, I personally felt that the, the, the technical aspect of it was a given in reference... Given, every given Sunday. Um, for people watching <laughs> don't, it. Don't, don't try and get back to my good book. I've never seen Peter so angry He's at you. absolutely furious. What did he score? Next goal wins. I mean, how he can compare this badly... Like six or seven. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Shocking. Yeah. So I mean, that's was, the but it's an Oliver Stone movie. Forever. That's it's it. an we, Oliver... made, we, we made twelve episodes. I mean, I've given an Oliver Stone movie a three point nine, and I lo- and I, I mean Oliver Stone, he's he's a big big director. Okay, let's just move on. I'm really upset. Um, IMDb score is three point nine. <laughs> it's actually six point nine. That's Peter's score. That's just Peter. That's yeah, just Peter Peter's, Peter's scoring. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Unbelievable, That's James. That's all you're getting from me. That's it. That's all you're getting what from me. What was your homework? Oh, okay. So I was set a out well a, a new direction in my homework this week, and I was asked to watch Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Say it quicker. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. <laughs> it's quite difficult to say fast. It's isn't not. It? I said it right. You did. I'm you like Cameron Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where she came from. Oh, okay. So. Uh, uh, I, I had a I had a Sunday of watching quite intense cinematic. Mm, films. You did, yes. It was uh, it was it wasn't hard work by any stretch of the imagination, no. but it was intense. I mean, particularly the second film was more gripping and yeah, sort of in your absolutely. Face. Mm. And um, so I woke up this morning and um, and I decided to watch this nice. Ni- nice and early doors before the family. I did get the message first thing this morning. Yeah. <laughs> It was a good message, that wasn't it? It was well, very good. We'll, yeah. we'll post that on Instagram. I think we I was quite chuffed about that. Yes. Um, so this is an animation, mm. and it's the simplest of concepts, isn't it? It's uh, basically the guy who wrote it, directed it, and also stars in it. Yep. Um, Just Dean voice. Fleischer Camp mm-hmm. is um, is basically a, a, a filmmaker who rents an Airbnb, and it's. He's got a little mask friend who he basically yeah. chats to and decides yeah. that he's going to make a documentary about. Little shell, mate. No, it's, it's really simple. And basically yeah. the concept is that they've basically, they live in this Airbnb and they got to meet like hundreds and hundreds of guests in this Airbnb. Yeah. And they've got this whole little world that kind of works around the house. And mm-hmm. um, the, the, he, the shell moves around in a, a tennis ball with a little hole in it so yeah. you can get from one place to the other. And they've got all these different, these type of things. <laughs> And, and he makes rope out of hair that comes yeah, from the that's sink. Big, yeah, the, the special hair, the party, spe- party hair, or the something pa- calls it. The, the, the party <laughs> cur- the, the curly hair. The per- yeah, it's very curly hair from the, is, from the yeah. sink. Because apparently that's the strongest. Apparently, and you could hear the director <laughs> laughing. I looked, that was one of my favourite bits in the film. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, that was a lovely bit. And um, so yeah, so this is it. And basically, um, um, there is. I can't. I've forgotten what the chaos is that causes all of his family to be removed. Oh, it's, so basically, the, the original couple who are in the house mm-hmm. have an argument. That's the right. argument is massive, and they they move out of the house, right. and they're tipping out drawers. And by accident, they take all of Marcel's family, <gasps> which are also them. shells as well. Yeah, yeah. Poor Marcel. and it is poor Marcel, and he talks in his beautiful soft <laughs> voice, which which is not annoying at all. Admitted, admittedly, oh, no. you think it's, it's going to really annoy me. Oh, did it? No, so I didn't. I didn't get that feeling at all. Mm. It's, it's just elegant, cute. It's just yeah. really, really cute. I like that elegant. Cute. It is. Yeah, it's just nice. It's just really lovely. And and then the story starts to kind of develop. And it's how to describe the story. The story is basically everything that you need to know about life, love, and relationships told by a one inch shell yeah it is one of the most beautiful things i think i've ever seen in my entire thank life you. Well, that's a 10. and thank we've you. had you know this the last few months have been mm. a bit shit haven't they and yeah. like there's been quite a lot of mm. you know bad stuff that's happened around absolutely. us absolutely and we use cinema as mm. a as an escape to, as an escape absolutely i i didn't cry during no, this film but, but i felt very very close pretty much the whole way through it if you have had if you've had a shit time or if there's anything bad going on in your life, watch Marcel, The Shell With Shoes On, because it will just let you know that you're not alone and yeah. it'll just let you know that this is actually what life dishes us up. And, yeah, it's just one of the most it's, wonderful it, things you can ever watch. He's got a little bit of... not, And yet again, it's not annoying. It's like, 
come on, we can do it. Yeah. Let's do it. And he's a bit cheeky with the with he the is. director. And, yeah. and yeah, it's just honestly, it is. And the, the basically the journey goes along the route of them trying to find the. Fa- this sounds like a Disney it or does. a Pixar it does. by it description. Does. Yeah, it couldn't be further no. from that because it is. It's almost like this is what Pixar watched when they started making I Toy agree. Story. Yeah, it's the, it's it's the same plot, but it's done with an elegance and a maturity and a professionalism, which I've never seen in anything before. Yeah. It's a totally different animation to anything I've ever to seen. To me, before. it was almost as if as if the the nineteen seventies animators from Morph. Yeah. Decided to actually yeah. make something. Does that make sense? Because that yeah. had an element of realism and cheekiness, and so on and so forth. But expanded on it, and actually, we've got something here. Let's make it yeah, but really Mor- poignant. But, but Morph was kind of the animation of the moment, wasn't it? Yes, this, he was. This is apps. It's modern it, Morph. It's, it's no, it's not. It's like it's timeless. I think it, it's like he had a story that needed to be told. Mm. And this was the best way for him to get that story onto yeah. a screen. And it was perfect. Good. I'm going to need your score. I can't give it a 10. I can't give it a 10. And, and I, am score- I am scoring it high because it is, it is the right time for me to watch this film hmm. with everything that's gone yeah. on in the world. It's, it's 8.5. It's, it's a big score. I don't know that I would... I don't. Yes, I am. I'm always going to score that film eight point five. It's beautiful. Good. It's an. It's an emo. It's, it's the emotional roller coaster mm. that you would never expect to have as an emotion. Emo, yeah. As a, of a film, it's, it's just the. I just bumbled all of that out, but it, you guys. I know exactly what, what, you what you mean. It's a cracker. I, it's an absolute unknown cracker. It weirdly took me about three months to hit the play button on that when I was watch, when I was considering watching it over and over again. And I'm not. I don't usually do that. I usually go. Oh, I'll just try another go. But even even with what we watched yesterday, mm. I was actually quite happy if it was going to be like a Pixar esque yeah. type of mm. you know animated jolly story mm. that I could just smash. Yeah, through a little bit of noise in the background almost. Yeah, and it I was, was so much more than that, wasn't it? Yeah, I was. I was actually getting angry with family members when they were coming into the room and making a little bit of noise because he talked so quietly. <laughs> yeah. I was like yeah. pausing and huffing and reversing little bits, him. and yeah, and it's. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, there we go. Okay, nice, good. It so you recommend seven, people to watch it? Oh, 100%. It's, 7.7 it's, 7 on IMDb. Yeah, I see that, that 1% extra is because, yeah. of, because of the moment, but mm. that's fair enough. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. Is that us nearly done, pretty much? You need to... Anything we're changing else? it up next week for the homework. That's we? correct. I'm going to be setting Peter another piece. I'm doing quite well with my homework now, aren't I? It's, it's, the last three weeks have been... So we've had this discussion, haven't we? We might as well, we might as well put it out to our listeners yes, as to exactly. what we're doing and why. Yes. James has seen every film <laughs> that's ever been made ever. So I'm not going to set him homework anymore. No, no. there's because no need for it. he's not going to watch it anyway. He's either going to choose not watch it at all or he's just going to you know, press stop and walk out and make himself a cup of tea. Yes. So we're going to use this format. That basically, James is the movie maestro and I am his Padawan. So <laughs> he is going to educate me in the way of films. And he's then we're... the salt, you're the burn. Exactly. Can we you please there. grow a little plaque down there? <laughs> that would be great. And then we're going to discuss one film like this in a little bit more depth, aren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely, yeah. And then on top of that, you're going to continue your mm. search for movie and cinematic perfection. Yes. And you're going to tell us what you've seen on a weekly basis. Absolutely. What I'd like to do, it, 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 my dream would be, and, and, and rightly so, with, with, and we've been experimenting with Peter, is to, is to really... You see, it's, to me, it's very similar with music and other bits and bobs like that. I automatically assume that everybody's watching this stuff. And then when I start talking to people about it, they they look at me blankly and they say, "I have no idea what I, what you're talking about." Yeah, well, about. you saw sixty-seven movies last year, James. That's that's quite an unusual thing. And what Only I, at the cinema. That I mean, that doesn't yeah, include yeah, all yeah. the movies I watch at home. But what as well. I've realised is mm. is that I used to be a huge cinematic nut. Yes. And then for the last fifteen or twenty years, I just haven't bothered. Yeah. And now I'm getting so back Good. into it and absolutely yes. loving it. And actually, the homework for me. Yes. That's been really weird at the beginning, <laughs> but we're getting to a place now yes. where I'm really starting to understand why you like films. Mm. And I've got to say, last week and this week, I mean, yeah. two, and you two, couldn't get any more opposites of each what other. What are you setting him next week? I'd, I saw a film last week. It, it's a brand new film. Uh, it is out on Netflix. Uh, it is another mammoth big movie. It's another good two and a half hour long movie. It is epic. It is. 
if you don't feel cold while you're watching this, there's something really wrong with you, okay? And if you don't feel hungry while you're watching this, <laughs> there's something really wrong with you as well, okay? Oh, I think I know what this is. You know is. exactly what I'm talking yeah, about, Yeah, this you? is the Snow Travellers or something. The Society in the Snow. Yeah. And is, it, it, is it Society in the Snow? I think so, yeah. Is Would you a, like to double-check um, the buff facts? And is this a remake of Alive? Well, Alive was a, an American version of what the happened. same story it's exactly it's the like same story it's like a Colombian soccer team or something and they crash you're, in the you're Aguarian you're Aguarian you're Aguarian you're Aguarian you're Aguarian <laughs> you're Aguarian I think uh, Cameron, yes exactly Cameron Diaz is uh, <laughs> from is from Cameron Diaz isn't she she's from you Aguarian <laughs> <laughs> it's called Society of the Snow yes. and that is your homework oh, they, they eat butter nut you have honestly I've and, and the reasons why I get really excited about certain films, and it's not always the genre, as you can see with, you know, Bowie's Afraid and, and, and Marcel. It, it's not always the, 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 the genre. It's not always the actor. It's not always the, the, the director. To me personally, it's the art of what's been achieved, OK? Mm-hmm. And this is a disaster movie. It's the sort of movie that my wife would usually like watching. It's big. It's epic. It is. It's, it's, it's subtitled, which makes it more authentic in that respect. The acting in it is incredible because you've got these unknown actors talking in their in their own language from a story from that part of the world. It's just what language is that? Uruguayan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Uruguayan. Awesome. Okay. Well, I, I saw a live when it came out of the cinema, and I, I really like that. As a and it's got Ethan really... Hawke in it. Yeah. Weirdly. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Okay. Because he was in Why? the movie last week, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But not the one you sent me, but the one I saw hmm. because you'd yeah. watched it and I wanted to watch it and yeah, yes. I, didn't, I didn't want to feel left out. Um, I just want to make a little little special mention, actually. Yes. I, I've got a special mention. I feel like it's oh. the same person. Oh, well, why didn't you go first? Um, it is a Mr. Leo Miles. Oh, yeah. So, basically, I don't know whether... Bring it up for Leo. I don't know whether we've converted him to, like, the biggest film buff ever, but he kind of texts me about three times a day yeah. now, basically telling me what he's currently watching and giving it a score, and I'm loving it. So, he contacted us on our Instagram, which is at the Popcorn Pundits. You two can contact us. And he's he contacted us on Saturday afternoon and said... Uh, Sisu has been downloaded <gasps> and ready for my Saturday night viewing. Yes. So we said we can't wait to hear what you think. And, and he has told us what he thinks. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. He so crumbs. No, before before we go into detail, uh, Peter did a, a review of Sisu because that was one of the homeworks yeah, I gave you. And that, was absolutely. that last week or the week before? Uh, it was two weeks ago, I believe. Yeah. So if you want to get a recap of that, go back two weeks and listen to Peter's review. However, review. Why? 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 <laughs> I don't. Just, just, I'm getting into get this. Hour. Carry on. Um, so he said crumbs. Six point five for the flying mine in the guy's head. <laughs> uh, the plane crash was a little too much, but quite enjoyable, if not gory. And then he messaged again yes. and said, "This was uh, on the Sunday." Mm-hmm. Also watched A Man Called Otto. Mm. Really heartwarming. And although I knew what was coming. It got me in the end. A score of 7.2. Nice. So we've got a 6.5 for Sisu and 7.2 for A Man Called Otto. Nice. He told me that he basically um, nearly cried the whole way through A Man Called Otto. Not Sisu, though. No. 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 Um, And then the the other review that I got from Leo this week, uh, just watch Retribution, a Sky original with Liam Neeson. Don't bother. Five. Yeah. Emoji. And on that note, I think that's a good note to end on. It is. (laughs) Popcorn pundits. Podcast. Podcast. Oh, Week nice. twelve. Yay! Who knows what day it is? Mm, it's definitely Thursday. <laughs> it's a Thursday. It's a Thursday In on the eighteenth of January. Or <laughs> Brilliant.